Oh. So we are sticking to our live schedule, which is Tuesday Facebook, Wednesday YouTube, Thursday Instagram, Friday TikTok. But we've heard you and we've heard that people like our YouTube videos. So today we are streaming on our Facebook. We're going to go live there in a few seconds, but we're also on YouTube right now. A couple things on YouTube. I do have a few people looking for comments so that way they can answer questions. Um, but we may not see your comments and questions because it's more of a secondary where the Facebook is the live that we're promoting and doing yes. it on. Is mm -hmm. that correct? That's correct. All right. So look for Jazzy in the comments, Kim. And mm -hmm. if you want to join us over on Facebook. I'm ready? I'm ready. Okay. Stand by for Facebook. You're good. Hey everyone, welcome to our Facebook Live. So as you guys join, I need to explain a few things. Number one, we love our live schedule and we are Facebook on Tuesdays, Wednesdays YouTube, Thursdays Instagram, Fridays TikTok. But we also know a lot of people like to watch our videos after the fact on YouTube and also create playlist. So today is the first day that we are using two phones to stream. Sean's on Facebook, but we are also streaming to YouTube. So if you are on YouTube and you have a question, we do have people over there looking and making sure we get the questions answered. We will always come back and answer your questions, but we also have some people over there just kind of waiting um, and ready to answer. The view on YouTube, just to let you know, is just the above view. So if, if that's the view you like, we would suggest heading over to our Chalk Couture Ken's Creations YouTube channel. You will see just the above what's going on. Where on Facebook, you're going to see us in portrait straight on. So number one. Number two. Oh my goodness. It has been a hot second since we have been live and I feel like we are light years behind. Um, but we were not live last night, week for many different reasons. The main reason is there was a lot of news happening in another company. We were covering that. And we just needed a second to catch our breath. We just got back from Maui, which was wonderful. Um, of course, we have our puppies. We have a puppy coming in very soon, in two months. June. June. So we just... Uh, I was ready to dive, and Sean was like, nope, we just, we need to take a week for ourselves. Huh. And we did. We did. We did good. Mm -hmm. And it's a one year since the C word started. Anyways. Okay, so um, welcome to our Facebook Live. I'm really excited for this live because we bought these saws. Gosh, it's been about a year ago now, and I forgot about them until the, I was reorganizing today. I don't know if you saw my little reorganization trick in the back there. Of how I have these saws now displayed. I did not. I don't. I didn't even see it yet. It's so smart. Um, because these are saws. You can hurt yourself. Um, so we are gonna do a saw today, because that is one of the great things about Chalk Couture. If you do not know what Chalk Couture is, make sure you hit that share button with your friends, your family. Let them know if you have questions. Let us know. I am ready to create. I'm going to go over all of the products with you that we are using, and that way you guys should have all of your answers. Now, the big, big, big one is, please remember, we are now streaming directly on Facebook, meaning we're not using fancy software or anything. Um, and I also wanted to let you guys know, I will show a lot of this stuff once I'm done, like this, show it to you and all that stuff. I do want to address two things, so YouTube and Facebook. Number one, new paste formula. If it is on our website, it is a new formula, meaning we do not have the old formula in our stock anymore. You'll know it's the new formula because you'll have that. It will say creamy a dreamy. And Club Couture members, you have something extra in your packet this month. So if you were a Club Couture member in... February. In March, you're going to get not only the wild and free transfer, which we're using, you're also going to have your packet of three paste, which is Tide, Guava, and Sage. But Club Couture members, very exciting. You get the exclusive transfer. 
You are a dream come true. Get it? Because our paste is creamy dreamy. Mm -hmm. And you also get two packets of the new paste formulation and a nice little letter. So the reason I tell you this is I know I have a lot of Club Couture members that watch our lives. Do not throw away your pack without making sure you have this little thing. It's, it, it's just thrown in there with it, with your Club Couture envelope. Okay, so before we get started, I'll explain a little bit about Club Couture. We get this question a lot. What is it? So Club Couture is a program offered by Chalk Couture. Um, so you could be a Club Couture member with any designer. You get um, an exclusive B-size transfer. You get three pay singles, a free catalog, $4.95 flat rate shipping. But as perks for Ken's Creations, we give special perks just for our Club Couture members. If you want to know what some of those are, definitely reach out to us. We'd be happy to go over it. But I think, personally, we have the best Club Couture around. What do you think? We do. We do. And I'm just saying, Club Couture members, I just hope you like Nerds Clusters or one Prime. That's all I'm going to say. Thanks, Nancy, for the 50 stars. I don't know what stars. Thanks. I don't Nancy know what B. they do, but I feel so important when someone gives me a star. But I don't even know what it does. All right. So, you want to see something sad? Hmm. I did it. You guys are going to judge me. It's fine. Judge away. Someone said, Ken, are you really going to buy a just all new paste? And I was like, no, I have old paste. Okay, Shawnee, come look. <laughs> Judge me. I can't do it. I can't have old paste mixed with new paste. So I'm waiting for all of the new colors to get here. It's very sad looking. <laughs> here is my colors that are still usable. They're just not new formula. And it really does, in my opinion, make a difference. The new formula really is that good. All right. So, Sean will let me know if there's any questions on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Since we aren't seeing questions, Jazzy or someone might say, hey, we have a YouTube. Um, and we are making a commitment to get back to all questions by 24 hours. Maybe 48. Could be something, too. Just depends on how busy <laughs> everything's been. Okay, so all we did on this, we bought this at a... Um, it's basically yeah. like a little marketplace. Um, Jazzy went on a mission and found these. It is a saw. Now, this was pretty... Um, it wasn't dirty, but it was aged. It was what rusty. did you? It was rusty. It was what rusty. did you use to clean it? I used the uh, copper Brillo pad, okay. which worked pretty good to get the, the really top surface of that. I mean, you can still see that there's some pitting and stuff. If you really wanted to get rid of that, you'd have to get a sand, uh, sandpaper like mm -hmm. a, or a wire wheel and to get that taken yeah. care of. But I think it's fine. So we're using the Wild and Free Club Couture. This is the March Club Couture. This is still available. So if you want to become a Club Couture member, you would start your membership today. You would actually get the same packet that we just sent. So the Wild and Free, the three pay singles, and you'll get your welcome letter saying everything you get with Club Couture. Now couple things on this um, I want to show you really quick because we get this question all the time. Down below, it will always tell you what the name of the transfer is that we're using. Everyone keeps asking me what the W means. So I got this question yet again. So I am going to explain this to you. I'm going to grab this transfer, which is one of our transfers that came out a year ago and show you. So here is the name of this transfer. So there's no W. So essentially our transfers, just like our piece had, went through a updo and we're always calling, always trying to get the best product. So the W means it's a water-based transfer. Now essentially why this is important, two big reasons. Number one, if you're going to use your transfer on a non chalk couture surface, you're really going to want to make sure to fuzz the transfer and you're going to want to make sure that you do everything you can to maintain because these guys are sticky and you're going to want to clean them right away. So with that said, I'm going to grab fuzzing cloth and you guys, I, this is a brand new fuzzing cloth because we literally we sold ours. We, haven't washed it we haven't even washed it. You can see there's little hairs. I so this might be dangerous. I it, it might be, yes. So sure. I normally recommend washing your fuzz and cloth at least once, even though it says on here that you do not need to wash it. The reason I like to 
is um, there's little fuzzies that may come up. And my linen roll, I think we might be okay. We might be okay. I don't know. All right. And then. There's uh, an older one if you want an older one. What do you mean there's an older one? Fuzzy ball. Eh, it's fine. Is there? It should be inside the drawer. Where? No. Oh, oh yeah. On yeah. Okay, okay we'll use our old one. You can see this one is well loved. Well loved. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and fuzz this. Now, this is going on a surface that we haven't tested. So could we wax this surface? We could. Um, we're not going to because I don't think it's going to need it, but we are going to fuzz it. And we are going to want to make sure we have my placement tape ready to go. Now, placement tape essentially is a fancy word for our... Um, or placement of our letters. Here's one for you, Shawnee. Hi, Jazzy. Hi, Jazz. But we're gonna be using it for one of my favorite things, which is to block off stuff. Because as you can see, this design is gonna get kind of smushed onto this, and I'm gonna block stuff out, and we're gonna do that. Okay, so fuzz, fuzz, fuzz. I cannot stress this enough. A lot of people say, how much do I need to fuzz? How important is fuzzing? Fuzzing is going to be a lifesaver for you when you go to remove the transfer. You do not want to stretch it. Once again, though, even this has, you can see all the little fuzzies that that's left just behind. From, that's from just the new one floating around. That's just the new one floating around. So that's why Sean was like, please don't use that one. You, know, you, you, would, you would have a hundred of those we all would. over the place. As long as they're not in the mesh area, you're good. Yeah. Okay, so I'm trying to plan it. We are going to put some flowers and details here. So my wild and free is going to start kind of here. It's going to be wild, and I want the wild to be kind of tilted. So we have it like this, and then the free is going to go here. So we don't want the flowers at first. So we are going to have to do a lot of um, cleaning of our transfer, which is fine. But we want to make sure we dry really well. I do remember Sean told me my length and all that good jazz, but I did, I did from the hilt all the way down. So it was so like 30, 30. So basically 15, 15 is center. center. So I want my and to be right about, but we're going to have flowers there. So I think this will be okay. If we have a little bit at the end, we have a little bit at the end, right? All right. Well, thank you, Sean. I was worried that it wasn't going to be okay. <laughs> You're adorable. Okay. So we're going to put that right there. And I'm gonna make sure that I have enough room up here. My Actually, my D is going a little bit off. Now, if you're not sure if it is or not, grab an LED light pad. It can be any brand. Turn it on, and then it will tell you where it lined up. So you can see my D. Is like right at the edge. It's right at, it's, it's like Lady Gaga living on the edge, glory. So we're gonna bring it down. Now keep in mind, I have not pushed this down and this is how sticky it is. So that's why fuzzing is important. I think that's a little better. What do you think, Shawnee? I like that. Fuzzy. Okay, so the other thing we're going to do is make sure there's no bubbles or ripples. Now, I don't have a ton of colors to work with because I'm just using new colors, but I do want it to match. I bought some flowers, and one is a very light gray. So, it's almost our grige color. <laughs> Sorry, that's our dog. Sierra. She can be kind of a pain. So, here I am blocking out. So, essentially... Wherever I don't want the paste to go through, we're going to block it out. So just so you guys know that what she's barking at is our, <laughs> this tells you how old I feel. When we moved into this location, when we moved into this location, we, um, was 2004 and the kid behind us, whose dad worked at the spot store, I don't even know how old he was. He was about... He's now in college yeah. and he has a dog to which I thought was Ryle's boyfriend to which Sean told me mm, fun fact it's a girl and I was Molly. like we don't we don't judge no judge here no judging um so that's what she barks at because she sees or hears him getting back from school and the funny thing is that Sierra doesn't bark 
except to go outside to go outside and for her ball okay so um john will get me in the shot here once i start chalking he's just getting up close and stuff because i know and then on youtube hopefully you can see it i know you're probably seeing our camera we're just kind of testing this out to see if we like it all right so now i don't have to technically do this if i was very very careful and didn't hit my parts uh, that I didn't want to have paste on it, I wouldn't have to do that, but let's be honest, we all know I like to live on the dangerous side of life. On the wild side. The, oh, Sean, look what you just did. You are so clever. <laughs> You're so clever, Shawnee. I tried my best. Do you know a year ago we had a whole bunch of little puppies running around? I did. Isn't it crazy how, everything that's happened in a year? Okay, so that is kind of where we're gonna start. I want it to be, here's one of the colors of the flower. And I want it to be that color. So a lot of people don't know this. You can mix, this is gonna shock you. You can mix our paste to get to whatever color you want. Now, obviously we want to use very, very little black to get to that because that's more of a almost almost like a very stormy or light i mean you could probably take storm and even lighten it up if you wanted i don't have it i don't think i have new storm do i um. my daughter just got her first puppy this week oh i do have a storm it says nori oh fun lucky, lucky her our neighbors just got theirs uh, sunday it's a it's a new corgi oh it's the with cute. its tail they're not bobbing it yeah, it's the cutest little thing I've ever his seen. Name, his name is Hank. Okay, so we are going to incorporate the gray in this way. So when I mix colors, this is how I do it. If, so you can always make a color darker. It's very hard to go the other way. So I'm just going to add... The other way around. It's easier to lighten it. You can't go back. Well, I guess really it depends, doesn't it? For me, it's easier to darken a color than lighten it. Huh. So if I make a color too dark, it's really hard to go back the other way. Oh, if you make it too light, I can always add a little bit more black. But if yeah. I added too much black, how am I going to get to gray? It's much harder. There you go. Okay. Now he's on. He's up to speed now. He was backwards. Now. He was backwards. Every once in a while, Sean gets very confident in his answer and then realizes, wait a minute. Okay, so we're going to just keep adding until I get to a really good storm, which is about right there, I think. She got a German Shepherd Husky mix with blue eyes. So we had a German Shepherd Golden Retriever mix. He looked like a German. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there's the color I really want. I'm going to need probably more than that because we're going to be doing that and also free. So I'm going to add a little bit more. Here's the deal. A lot of people don't know this. You can mix all of our Chalkology paste colors. So this is why we have these, what we call color trays. Um, and also these stir sticks is... You can take our, you know, we have our basic 30 colors, but you can mix them to make all sorts of custom colors. And in fact, when we usually decorate a room or redo a room, that's what we do. Hence why I tell you, and Sean will also tell you, keep your empty paste jars. Because if you make a color and you make too much of it, you can keep it. So really, we're getting a very, very, that's good. So you can do this. You can also mix our inks. Um, so it really does open up the possibility with Chalk Tour, which is what I love. Because even Grige would have been too dark, I think. Mm -hmm. Don't you? I think so, yeah. Okay. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is just the wild and part. And then I'm going to dry it using our new quick dry tool, which I love. The only thing I wish is I wish it had just a little bit bigger. Longer? Or longer cord, yeah. So, and then also we will try to get a shot where it always has me in the shot and up close, but we like doing this. Sean calls this live production style. Why do you call it live production style? Because it's live and we're producing it as we are going. So, whenever I'm always like, hey, Sean, what is the shot going to be? He's going to be, this is like live at 5 o'clock, getting your news. And I say, Sean, you do it. You do you, boo. 
-hmm. All right, so it doesn't take a ton. We're gonna remove our excess. We're gonna be very careful to watch for what I call heavy handed. All that means is when you're removing your paste, if you push too hard, sometimes you will get these, um, especially with white on mine, you get these uh, lines in your paste. You can kind of see one there. So that's one of the nice things about the new paste. You don't have to be heavy handed at all. It works so nicely now. Okay, so there we go. So I'm going to put this off to the side and we are going to wash this and I'm going to dry it. So Sean can show you how we wash and then I can show you how we're going to dry it. But when we pull this up, we're going to go slow and straight to the Sweet. ceiling. And this is because we do not want to harm our transfer. So there we go. I'm going to move this around. So the first thing I'm going to do while I'm over here is I'm going to take off my placement tape and just throw it away. Placement tape is cheap. So I, we buy, like, I'll buy 20 rolls at a time. So are our board erasers. Okay, so let's show you how to wash these. So designers all wash their transfers differently. This is just the way I wash it. And Sean will walk you through it as I do it. So we're going to turn out thing. Luckily ours has a sprayer. If you have a sprayer, do it this way. It's got a little more force to it. So it's easy to take the uh, wash off the paste this way. And first you're just going to get the bulkiness off of it first before we uh, start using the board eraser. Now it is important you do want to clean these as soon as you can. This new paste is awesome. It's heavy pigmented. It is dreamy creamy, but um, it will it can stain your transfer pretty quickly. So we wash our transfers right away. So and we just use a board eraser. We don't use any sort of um, chemicals or anything. Now, if you see here, we pulled up a little bit of the dirt on our sock. And as much as you want our board erasers to work, they're not going to work. So I actually use this from a different company and it's called their Enviro. And the reason I like this is it doesn't harm our transfers. And I can actually go in here and I'll get that dirt and grime off. So let me show you another spot where we got it, right there next to the flower. Can you see that, Johnny? Okay, so that, so I could do all day trying to get it off, but it's not going to come off, but as soon as we use this. And this also works really well with uh, glitter and shimmer. Glitter and shimmer. Yeah. It's not 100%, but it's a lot, a lot better than your uh, order is. Yep. All right. So once we are done, I just do a couple shake shakes, and we need to dry this because we're going to use it right away. So let's head back here. Sean can show you up close while I... So while he is doing that, I am going to be over here. Now, I this is how I dry my transfers to use right away. Um, and so you're going to see people once again do, their, the, everyone has their own technique. If you do not have a workstation like I do, you can grab, um, someone moved it. We have a self-heating cutting mat. Well, that makes sense for it to be there. You have to, you're going to have to grab it from that side. Though. It's fine. Just okay. in the future, can we put it back here? Sure. It makes way more sense being back there. I appreciate you cleaning, but let's... So I'll get, show that to you guys um, on the next video. But if you have our self-heating cutting mat, you can use that and it works great. So this way you're not putting it directly on a table or whatever. Okay, so I squeegee it out using our four-inch squeegee. Grab our fuzzing cloth. Okay, so now we're at the point where we can lift it up. It's still going to be wet at this point, which is normal. We're then just going to wipe down your self-healing cutting mat or whatever. And then I just squeegee it in between two fuzzing cloths. If you want to use another towel, anything will work. There we go. I'm going to put this off to the side so Sean can show you up close here. Before I do too much, I do have a couple spots I want to clean up really quick. 
Um, which I have no Q-tips. I think we ran out. Um, okay. I have no, I have no wet wipes. They were right, they were right there. I pulled them out for you too. Mm. Oh, there they are. You put them underneath your thing. All right. So normally I would use Q-tips to get this, but we are out. I'll have to get some. I like to use the Swispers, which work really nice. Yeah. Okay, so we are going to use our quick dry tool. Now, it's really important, a couple things. We're going to be layering and putting a sticky transfer on this. So we want to make sure this is dry. Our quick dry tool has two different settings, a low and a high. It's about 150 degrees or so. And I have to say, I'm I'm pretty impressed with with it. Um, it's a lot quieter than our uh, hair dryer, and it just works so well with the new paste formula. I think it's out of stock. Uh, I do have some on hand for my Club Couture members, so if they want to get some, but as soon as they do come back in stock, it is not an embossing gun. That's very important. It doesn't get hot enough for emboss. So the best way to see if something is dry is using your light. You're going to see it. You want to flat. You can test it by doing something like this, but just know if it's wet, you now have a fingerprint. Do a quick dry here. And then I'm going to grab our transfer and make sure it is completely dry. So if you have, you can have, um, like we, I could sign someone up else, else up to be a Club Couture customer because the only way to get a Club Couture transfer is to be a Club Couture member or a designer. So I couldn't just go order five extra of these. I would have to be a designer or excuse me, a Club Couture member five times. Um, or because the reason I'm telling you this is you could technically, if you had two or three transfers, just use transfers back to back, but. We don't have that. Okay, so we are nice and dry. I'm gonna turn this around. Somebody asked, is that metal, is, is it heating the metal? It's not on there long enough to really heat it at all, so you should be fine. Okay, so when it comes to here, we're gonna be putting the free here. So we're gonna be hitting the wild. You have a couple options. You can just put your transfer over that and it should, quote, should be fine. But I like to grab our these are our backer sheets and I just cover up it this is what they look like and I use our backer sheets just to give us that extra little bit of protection so I'm going to first place the and free let's see I think I like it right what do you think right There. Just uh, just be above that tape tape line on your E. Oh, I see what you're saying. Good catch. So you could leave it like this, or you can give yourself just that extra protection. This way you're not like, oh, am I gonna hit it? Am I not? You just need to make sure that F is still visible, which, there we go. No, I think it's actually dry enough to where we don't need it. Nice. Okay, so I'm not gonna mask it off this time just because um, of time, but we're gonna be very, very careful. So I'm gonna use our multi-tool. Here's our multi-tool. So the multi-tool is called the multi-tool because it is multiple things. Yes. Um, one of the nice things about the new paste is the fact that you have a little bit more time with it. It takes a little longer to dry and this gives us the flexibility to spend our time getting into these areas that we would normally think are tougher to get to. 
So once I've gotten into the areas that I'm afraid might touch it, I'm just gonna go, take my time. Now I know we're not gonna get the full E on there, but we're just gonna get what parts we can on the saw. Now when I get down to this E once again, just paying attention where it goes. The nice thing is, is this isn't permanent until unless we make it. So if we did make a mistake, and that's what I love about chalk, is if you make a mistake to the point where you feel like, oh, I cannot fix this, you wash it off and start over. And then I'm just looking for those heavy handed. We got a little bit of a flower there, but that's okay. Easy to take care of. Okay. So once again, I'm going to lift directly straight up. Now, while we still have this and it's wet, I'm going to grab a baby wipe. Just like that. Got some up here. I'm going to go ahead and go wash this. Sean can come around here and get you guys a nice look at that. Hello, our friends on YouTube. All right, YouTuber tubes. As you can see how he got the R within the blades themselves. So that's pretty cool right through here. It looks really cool that way. And then we'll get all the colorful flowers in there. And it should be really awesome. We did a Christmas version of a saw that we did uh, a couple of years ago that turned out really nice. I think we gave that away. Uh, we uh, auctioned that off. There's the babies. And it's, of course, it's National Puppy Day. There's a national puppy. It's National Puppy Day. I know. And there she is. Oh, these puppies. Our life wouldn't be the same without them. Okay, so I'm going to put this... This is really heavy, actually. Yeah, it's, it's actually a much bigger than normal, and that is a metal handle, not wood yeah. like you normally, uh, normally see. So this is our self-healing cutting mat. So I use this um, to clean transfers. I also use this to line things up. Um, to protect my surface on paint, uh, it, it is self-heating, so if you accidentally cut it, um, it's, it's a great universal tool, but I like it for this reason, if you're going to be using transfers back-to-back. -back. So, I just put it on here, and I'm using this 4-inch squeegee. Now, this is our new 4-inch squeegee, which means our old one was made of rubber. rubber. So that's... The old one, the new one is the silicone, much more which flexible. I like because the old one, if I did too much force on our transfers, you could actually tear them. Not with the squeegee man. It is easy breezy. Okay, let's go ahead and try it. We're going to lift it up. You can already see the stick comes back. And this is the microfiber side of the uh, resin cloth, which is the dry side, dry, yep. drying side. So I'm just going to put that in there. We'll go let it chillax for a quick sec. Take this down because we don't need it. And now I'm going to bring out our wild and free. So I'm going to turn this to you guys also so hopefully you two can see it. Um, so this is where we're at right now. This is a mixture of bright white and storm. And we're going to dry this because we're going to be adding some flowers here and flowers here. So it will be hitting these areas. So I'm going to go ahead and dry it. The only criticism I have of this quick dry tool is the cord length. It's a pretty short cord. It's three feet. Yeah. So I did give them that feedback. But other than that, I have to say I've been pretty impressed with it. Mm-hmm. What do you think about the dry tool? I think it's really nice. It's not loud, so you guys, I don't have to like the old fashioned way mute us. You can still hear us as we're talking and drying at the same time, so. 
So today, while I dry this, when I went to Joanne's, if you haven't had these, I'm addicted. You can get them at the Dollar Tree, other places. But I usually like soft licorice, and I saw this stuff. Mm. And Sean goes, can I have some? Which kind of surprised me, because he's not usually I, eating. I don't like the, 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 this company makes a lot of licorices, and I don't like their licorice at all. Their, their black licorice is all but good, but he was else, like, this stuff is good. It's really good. I was very surprised. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take off this because our flowers are going to be hitting that. Um, the main reason I put that on there is... Uh, Try not to cut yourself. You don't want to cut yourself because all of these are... I'll show you what I did. Come here, Johnny. Follow me. This is what I did. So we reorganized our surface room, which is this room. But look at that's what I did with the sauce. I used those little foam risers for trains and stuff, and I have them now with like that. Awesome. Not, was that smart? Smarty pants. Sorry, people on YouTube. We're Sorry, YouTube people. I know. But okay, so let's go ahead and start looking at our design. So Here's our design, and I'm going to try to get it where both YouTube and you can see it. And the colors I want to use is going to be guava, peony, um, sorry, peony, guava, pistachio, pistachio. eucalyptus, and then a little bit of this that we already made, which is the bright white and storm. And I'm gonna make it a little bit darker for highlighting purposes, but those are generally the colors we're gonna use. And I do have tied, this would be my alternative colors if we wanted to add more colors, but I think I'm gonna stick to those pinks and stuff. And I'm gonna take the coral just in case I want to ombre, we have that option. But the color of roses I'm trying to match is these. So maybe I should do, yep. Okay, see, see what happens? Always, always making a, a last minute switch, Sean. Oh, here's a good uh, thing to, people have been asking. So our new paste comes with these little foam lids, let's say for your protection. This is only a temporary thing until everything with our paste kind of settles down. Um, I recommend keeping them. And the reason why is even though this paste has a longer dry, it shouldn't, like they've actually, they tested it where they left the lid off, I think for 14 hours or 14 something. 14 hours and it barely made film a uh, film on it. Yeah, I still like to have it in my lid just to be safe. safe, yeah. So I keep it to each his own. All right, so I've added a little bit more of the storm. So I want a little bit darker than the bright white. Once again, I'm just gonna mix that and have that ready. And this is the new paste, so it does, like Sean just said, has a longer dry time. So I don't have to worry about, oh, I have to use this right away or it's gonna go bad in the live. But we'll just have this off to the side. All right. Any questions or anything, Shani? Uh, not on Facebook. Perfect. All right, so we've already dried this. You could, if you want to, continue to let it dry, grab your uh, quick dry tool. Um, the biggest thing on this is the new paste, just it does take a little longer to dry and it dries a little differently. So you just want to make sure that before you get too wild and crazy, test it or make sure. Okay, we are going to have fun with the transfer and kind of turn it around and get different perspectives of these flowers. Let's do it right above. Okay. So this is, once again, where our placement tape is going to come into play. So we are going to play with the flowers basically from here, from basically here 
over. So I'm gonna grab my placement tape to give myself a reminder that we do not want to go past here. And then up here, we don't wanna go past here. Now, that also means, because we want this here, do we, if, do we want the flowers behind it, or if you want to peek it through, you just need to make up your mind on that. What do you want, Sean? Do you want to peek it through, or do you want it to be over be, it? I think it'd be cool to go over it. Over it? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Debbie asks, when will the other paste be the new formula? It's a slow process. They can only make so much at a time. And Correct. Then, and um, those popular ones always have to be, make sure we always have those going, but... They are making new colors as Usually they, they will get released on a Thursday. Yeah, they had, we had a whole bunch last Thursday. Mm -hmm. We're not sure about this Thursday yet. We'll let you know. So, yeah. So if you're a Club Couture member, we send you an email. Um, if you're a designer, we send a post in our weekly designer or our Facebook group and an email. Um, and then we generally post it on our this Facebook page that we're on right now to let you know, especially on paste colors, because as Sean just said, a lot of people are waiting for the new paste. Um, I don't know if any last sold out last week, but also, fingers crossed, Wings is supposed to come back into stock this week again. So, so for those of you who don't know, Wings is that design. Okay, so we're going to let it go over a couple areas here. And we're going to do kind of an ombre effect. So I'm going to grab my... Brand new beanie. Yeah, we for, this is a brand new open. So let me show you how it looks open. So there is all sorts of good juicy paste or, And you want to make sure you get it all. It does not move as fast as the old paste either. So it kind of stays in its position although it still can move or if it's left upside down it will move but it's yeah. slower so what i do when i first open it is i just do this and the nice thing about this paste is it's fluid enough to where if you hit it it pretty much falls um but you want to be careful because in shipment and stuff you never know and that was a lot of paste we would have lost would have been that would have been very sad sean we don't want to be sad. All right. So then I'm going to grab this. This is the Couture Coral. And this was one of the very first ones that I got in the new formula. You can see because it is dried. And to Sean's point, it is it 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 does it really nice when it didn't dry on the edges or anything. Nope. It's still wet. Okay. I'm just gonna get my greens ready too, just so I have them. So we have this. This is pistachio. I put that one in Vogue. upside down. So this is an in vogue color, meaning it will only be here for this season. And then this is a brand new pistachio or uh, eucalyptus. And that one barely has any. That's awesome. So I still recommend just giving it a quick stir. But look at that. Oh. The stuff, you, are you guys, I can't, I just can't, can't, I can't, Sean. Okay, so I have no rhyme or reason when it comes to the ombre. You could do all this fancy highlighting, I don't. Generally what I do is I grab the lighter color I'm working with, in this case, the peony. And I'm just going to go through and hit it. And I want this to be the predominant color, so I am going to use it more than I would traditionally use the couture. So I'm just going to go through, and where there's the flowers I want, I'm just going to hit it. Now, we still have all this area that's also going to need where our greenery is. Um, but as Sean had said earlier, we have a little bit more time to work with it. So now I'm going to go and take this. This is the couture coral. And you're going to see I'm just kind of putting it. I'm not at this point doing any kind of removing of the paste because we want to do our final removal using whatever color you want to be predominant. So in this case, the peony. So I'm just going through and we're going to let that hang out for a sec. I'm going to grab pistachio and we're just going to hit 
few areas that we do have the leaves. And then we're going to do the same thing for eucalyptus. And I always tell people, don't overthink this. A lot of people will be like, oh, I got in my head and overthink thought, you know, where does this go? And this hot mess doesn't matter. Okay, so now we're going to do our removal process. Now, I am not going to be keeping the ink, this paste. So um, that's why I have a squeegee ready to go. I'm going to start with my greens. And the reason I'm starting with my greens is they are the last that I put down. So you want to do those first because it's already drying. So by doing it first, it's going to start drying. You're going to get a little bit extra time while you do your pinks. This is a little hard to see if I'm getting everything because it is this rusty kind of color, but I think Sean's second eyes. Okay, You're so good. now we're gonna do our pinks. So this is a mixture of our pitur, coral, and, and I'm doing a pretty heavy mixture here. If you want to leave more of the harsh lines, you can do that. There is no right or wrong when it comes to this. Now you do want to have a squeegee ready to go just with a little bit of one of the colors. So if you lift and it starts lifting with it, meaning you need more paste, you could do that. But look at that. Oh. We're going to slowly pull up. All right, Gorgeous. I am gonna go clean this. Sean can come around here. And we do have a couple little spots I wanna fix, but other, I think it looks great. Beautiful. Close up for the YouTube guys. There we go. If uh, if you're if you're a designer and you want to know what's going on, you can always check your back office to find out what's coming back um, on any item that should be in the you know catalog. If it's out, it will tell you when it's coming back, or at least approximate. If not, um, we would have to go and look, so I don't know, I haven't seen it. You can start drying if you want. Okay. You don't have to, though. Stephanie asks, where did we get our saws? The beautiful Miss Jasmine, Jasmine got some at one, some, and then we found this one at a, it was a, um, kind of a, one of these little tiny booze that people bring stuff in. Um, we found this one, and this one was actually cheap. I thought this was going to be expensive. It was only 17 bucks. I was very surprised on the price. On what? This saw. This saw should have. This saw should have been like 50 bucks. But it turned out to be only 17 bucks. That looks so price. pretty. I know, doesn't it? We believe we were told last week when the last Thursday when the wings did go out so quickly that they were uh, Jessica Wilson called and they said they should be getting some more back this week. We hope we'll just have to wait and find out if that's a true statement or not. This is a bigger saw than what most people when you usually buy a used saw. It's just like a normal saw that a, for woodworking and whatnot. This is a, a big saw. It's like 32 inches, 30 inches long, so it's much longer. And it has a metal handle versus what you normally see as a wood handle. Now, this could have had a wood handle. This may have been the 
what's inside the wood handle, maybe, but I don't know. Yeah, I would love it. Those round, now those round blade saws, now those are expensive. Unless you just get a one that you, I mean, you can buy them for in today's saw blades, but if you want to look for an old one, like, that they use for ripping down at the saw mills, those are big, they're very heavy, and they are expensive. But that would be fun. That should be good. Kenny went up to go uh, the El Baño, so he should be back in a second. But that has turned out really, really nice. I'll show the YouTube guys again. There's our YouTube cam. Yeah, he's back. I'm sorry, I had to get some of my... Liquid For those of you who don't know, I do Fair Life, and I had to go get some of my chocolate milk. That too. Because you cannot, you can never have enough protein, right? Mm hmm Okay. That looks so good. I love it. Now, I'm going to say while we're doing this that because this saw is obviously wood, metal, I would definitely um, make this permanent by putting a thing. This way, rust does not get back on it if any kind of moisture got to it. This would I'm confused. What are you talking about? That you would definitely want to co uh, put a coating on this so it does not rust anymore. Oh, like you would want to you would want to spray it. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Do you have yeah. my four inch squeegee or no? It's right here. Okay. So Sean is talking about um, spraying it to make sure that it is protected. Yeah. So something you would want to look about doing if you ever do this, you definitely want to coat it. Here is one of the uh, kinds you can use. And then we got a lot of questions during our cutting board. Um, tutorial about if we want to actually use this in the kitchen, could you? Yes. yes you so can. I'm gonna let Sean show go. So, while all I'm doing, just so you guys know, besides drinking my chocolate milk, is I'm just uh, getting ready. this ready for our next one, so. So, even those these are decorative only, but if you wanted to use it for like a little serving tray on, you know, cheese and crackers, whatever, this is what you use. This is the one that is uh, approved to be food safe. I would definitely put uh, about three coats of this stuff on. This one's clear, obviously, and I think it's a gloss finish. No, technically, Chocolate Tour Corporate will tell you it is never food safe. They are nope. decorative only. Yep. Um, so we, as the independent designer, are telling you this. Oh, show the uh, YouTube, YouTube audience. Show YouTube guys, this is the one that is food safe. You can put this on those... Uh, Cutting boards, and then you can use it and don't have to worry about, uh, you know, any ickies getting on the food. We don't want the ickies. Awesome. Okay, so did you already dry it? We're good? Yeah, I think that's right. You are a rock star, Sean. Thank you. So are you. Oh, you're so sweet. Okay, so if you start using your transfer um, a lot and cleaning in between them, um... It, even though it feels dry, after about three times, I do recommend using a blow dryer. Um, and you want to use a blow dryer. The reason I say that is I use the cool setting real quick. And all this is doing is getting the moisture out of these little cells. Because even though it doesn't look like there's moisture, there is. All right. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to try to manipulate the transfer to get the flowers to go down this way. Um, and then masking the parts. Lori asks, can you use that stuff on glass? I think so, but I don't know how clear, clear it dries. Find an old piece of glass, spray it on there and see what the, what it looks like. And if it dries really nice, yeah, sure, why not? What are we talking about? The uh, shellac. Oh, yeah. That's a great question. Mm -hmm. They say, a lot of things say it's clear. It's clear when it's it, because it's going on something that's like very dark or something. But on something like that's like glass, I don't know. I've never done it. Mm. Tamara says she's loving it. Let's see. I want this flower to be more up here. I'm trying not to do another clean, but we might have to because I do want the flowers to be in tight here. I think that's what we'll do is we're going to do some flowers here and then we'll pick it up and turn it because we have all the other side. Okay, that's what we're going to do. 
So I'm going to just basically concentrate right here and then we will dry it and then I can move this part of the transfer over here to finish. So really on this one, all we're going to be doing is a very, very quick here. Oh, well, thanks, Lori. She's going to try it out on some glass and let us know. Thank you. Yeah, it'd be good to know. You guys are so good. So we don't want too much of this. I do want a little bit, but, and if it hits a little bit of the E, I'm okay with that, but I don't want to cover too much. Um, I will show you at the end though, you can remove paste with a little bit of um, your, well, wait, okay. So we're gonna start with the green first. Since I didn't want it to be perfect, I am going to have it hit a little bit of my E in different spots, just so that way we have that. And then we're going to do our flower. I don't know what flowers these are. They look kind of like roses, but I'm not sure. Would you say they're roses? Yeah, maybe peony, but it's hard to tell. All right, so now we have it there. I just want to add some flowers going up this way. So I'm going to grab my quick dry tool just to quickly do a first quick dry. Okay. And now let's add our flowers down here. So I kind of want flower. Hmm. All of these options, Shawnee. Craziness. Isn't that crazy? I think what I'm going to do is do this one on the corner here and then do another of the big flowers along the bottom. So, and use your, um, so in this case, because this um, is still pretty, I mean, it's dry, but we're not 100%. I'm gonna put down a transfer sheet, backing sheet, and this just gives me a little bit of, um, it makes me feel a little better knowing like, okay, it's not a hundred percent much. I think it would lift up myself mm -hmm. basically is what I'm trying to say here. People. Brenda says it's gorgeous. We're going to grab our, so this is peony and couture coral and we're going to grab pistachio. And on this one here, I know it's going to hit my E a little bit. That's okay but I don't want it to hit that flower. So I'm just gonna be very careful not to hit that. And worst case scenario, if I do. Karen asks, do they have just flower uh, transfers? They do, yes. yeah. Okay, I'm gonna start with my greens. I'm using the multi-tool because I get a little bit more control than even that mini squeegee and it, since I don't want to hit that flower and then up here I don't mind hitting up to that part of the E but I just want to be careful so this is why it's nice to have options when it comes to our squeegees and the detail or the um, detail tool is even smaller it is it's half the size of that I love our detail tool. I do wish our detail tool was a metal end. I'm sure it would have been more expensive, but I like a metal pokey thing. Pokey pokey, no joking. Yeah, I know that's not the official name, but no. it's the name I'm gonna give it. So I'm gonna show you, even though he put it on there, see it's it was still just a hair wet. So had we not protected that, it would have lifted up. Yep. Now keep in mind, um, I'm going to put this down right here so Sean can show you. 
I am not washing this transfer because we want to use this. So what's probably going to happen is, sorry about that. Sorry. Sorry. Let me guess. Mm. Yep. You're going to have to block that number during our lives. Mm -hmm. So this is probably going to stain on the transfer. Which is fine. If it's staying, no big deal. Still works fine. Okay, we're going to add one more flower and then we'll add some detail here. And we, I just want to add this flower right here, coming out right here with the leaf. Uh, well, actually, maybe I'll just do the flower halfy on, halfy off. So once again, because we just put this down, going to just put that there for... So Karen's asking, can you wash the paint? But this is not paint, this is a chalk paste um, off canvas after it's applied. On canvas, mm, I don't think you can if it's on canvas because it, it absorbs the canvas. Yeah, you would, I mean, you could paint the canvas. You'd paint the cam canvas first and maybe wax but, it. But yeah, I don't know if you would do. But if you're talking, if you're saying canvas as in this surface, yeah, this stuff would come right off. Uh, we just add water and this would come right off and you can do it all over again if needed. Um, our chalkboards, all these chalkboards here, these all stay up, but we change them out as the uh, seasons change. So it comes right off. As long as you don't um, put any kind of protective uh, coating on it, like we said, it'll always come right off with some water. All right, you can come up and show everyone. I'm going to go do right. my final wash on this, and then we can start decorating it. Nice. Take a peek. And just think what you could do with this. Beautiful, isn't it? All right, let's let our YouTube YouTubers. Washing it. Break out the heating tool here and start drying it. Again, this heat, uh, this uh, quick dry tool only gets up to about 150 degrees, and that's it. Hair dryers get a, a hair dryer gets about to 197, but it's so much noisier and blows everything everywhere. I'm just gonna set this here so you can show them how we got a little bit uh, of stain, but mm -hmm. like you said, nothing big. So yes, yeah, I'll show you that here in just a second. Thanks for the hearts, everybody. It's like one of the puppy puppy actually left. I don't know what she wanted. Thank you, Shawnee. So I'm going to show you what we were just saying that if you have these high end colors. If you leave it on too long, it'll stain. So he did actually pretty good. It just barely stains. See, it just barely stains. But it's not here. It's fine. Correct. There's no staining in here. So it's just And the big fine. part on this, you guys, when staining, and this is what I always tell people, is take your transfer up to a light source and look to make sure there's no staining there. That's where you really want it to look. 
So I, that's why we always say clean both sides of our transfers. So when we're done cleaning, we let it air dry. Sticky side up, we got this at Costco. We're gonna, Ken did a bad job, so come on over here, we'll clean it again. Nancy goes, Nancy goes, love the fact that the puppies are so peaceful during your lives, such a good girl. Uh, there was a couple lives where that little one right there was a terror. Well, it's only if she sees a B-A-L-L. -L. That's she, all. Yeah, when she's got one of those When she mouse, has that, game over. Yeah, might as well forget it. So okay, so here is where we're at. Go and bring this so Sean can show YouTube and everything. We're gonna now add some decorative detail here with these roses I got. And then um, do some twine. But you guys know me, and Sean's gonna make fun of me. I don't care, make fun of me. So I like to add just a little end down here so it kind of goes through. So I'm gonna use my go-to. So this, you guys, there are certain times a transfer's released you have a moment with that transfer, and you and that transfer sit there and say, this is a beautiful relationship, that's this transfer for me. It is no longer available. It was part of the endless love laundry, I think. I'm going to need to know straight wise, though, because it's at such an angle I can't tell. So you're going to have to do the Shawnee. Are you trying to keep it? I just want it to go straight down. Yeah, it looks pretty good, I think. It does? Yeah. Okay. So, I love this because it is a little bit distressed. It's a little bit, um, it's not perfect. Um, I love it so much that I bought, I think, five or six of them. And to this day, I use them. And yes, we have other border sets, and I could use them. That's your favorite. But this is my go-to. Danielle Fort says, I just adore your Goldens. I have three of them myself. We will have three here in a little bit. We will. Two girls and a boy. Yes. And so I am going to do the same thing down at this end, even though a lot of this is going to be covered just so that way we have it nice and consistent. And I'm going to hope that's straight. Do you think they'll bring this back? Uh, I don't know if they bring this back because this actually came but part. Of, it was a part of a bigger transfer that said endless. Endless laundry. Laundry. Endless laundry love or something. And I actually never used the other part of the transfer. I always just used this. Um, it is interesting how they choose, though, the ones they bring back. But I don't think this was a big seller. I could be wrong. All right, so Sean's gonna show you that while I clean it, and then we're gonna add some roses and twine, and we'll be good. Huh, little girl? She looks so much like her daddy, Sean. Yeah, she does. You break out the heating tool while I'm on this side, and maybe, maybe not, because it's stuck on something. What am I stuck on? Ah. What's wrong? Uh, your dryer was stuck on a shelf. Oh, it's good enough. We have to reach for the car. Being a good girl. Are you being a good girl? Yes, you are. She's a good girl. A good girl. All right, I gotta thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Shani. Okay. You're doing a good job, Cece. Go see Daddy. This one just likes to sleep, as you can tell. Unless there is F O O D. Okay, here we go. Now, on here, you can see where we did go a little bit on the different letters, which is fine. Um, in fact, the only part I'd probably fix is this one here. I'll show you this trick. If you take a baby wipe, and one that's just water formula, 
you can remove you don't want to stroke like this but if you literally just go to the one area you want to remove and barely touch it with your wet wipe you'll see it slowly she has something in her mouth that's why she's just going nuts oh is that why it'll slowly start to disappear and that's how you can fix that but most of the time what i will do is just grab my uh paintbrush and fix that mm -hmm. What does she have in her mouth? What did she she possibly have gotten? What's in your mouth, little girl? Uh huh. Piece of paper. <laughs> ah, dogs in there. Okay, Oral so fixations. I'm gonna go ahead and put all my paste lids on. Do we have any questions? Or because now it is if you just fun with accessories. Something like a tray. Could you epoxy it? Um, yeah. Absolutely. You can. You could do that as well. A nice clear epoxy on something if you did a serving tray is oh it's right here valerie asks uh, i ordered a heating tool from amanda but do you have to have a special extension cord with it if your plug-in is extremely close to your work area then no I mean, like if it's, if you have, because the cord's only three feet and your nearest outlet is four feet or more, then yes, you will need, mm -hmm. and just, it doesn't matter. It can be just a normal extension cord because it's not pulling a lot of amperage. Yeah, um, I don't think, and, and to be honest, most, when I said it and I was like, you know, I wish I had a longer extension cord. A lot of the feedback to me was, well, can you work at a station this is going, you know, most people are working at their, their tables and stuff. So I get that point, but, um, it's a pretty, it's a pretty short cord. I, oh, where'd my nice, I, my I pulled, go? I pulled all that stuff out for you. Oh, I'm not right used there. to that. Sorry. Yeah. Good. Oh, no, so I knew you were going to need it because you got flowers. And you got flowers. And I got your glue gun ready. Oh, guys, I'm so blessed. Okay, so we're going to do um, some roses here. Phyllis DeWald asked, do you wax? Do you use wax first on certain surfaces? So yes and no. I'll let Sean answer that, but let me grab the wax for so, you. Did you grab the wax? That I did not touch. It's, it's in your uh, in this still. Oh, thank you. So all these boards we have behind us, these have never been waxed. No need to wax it. We have no problems waxing where we live. There's people that have told us that those who live in high humidity areas, they need to they need to wax. Here's our surface wax. Okay. Now, if you are one like this, it's just metal. It's non-porous. Um, there is no reason to wax this. It should just go on nice and smooth, like our wax was made to be. If you want to do something like a poster board or something that's got like paper, or even do um, a greeting card or something. Yes, you definitely want to use wax because mm -hmm. paper will pull right up. Um, if you are using a non chalk tour type chalkboard that's like really kind of cheapy looking, I would definitely wax that because mm -hmm. you don't know what, what's on that surface. Mm -hmm. If you're using raw wood that's not been treated other than just cut, I would wax it. If not, you don't have to really, really wax that, but it's probably best to wax that. Kind of closes off the cells of the wood to keep it from soaking in too much. Um, there are some other reasons that you might want to use wax, but for us, we don't usually have to. Uh, one of our kits was a kind of a poster board material, and it had paper. We tried. We thought, ah, well, we, we never, have some that in our yeah. surface room. We never have to do this. Blah, blah, blah. Well, that one we did. We had to wax that. We regardless. learned. We learned that the hard way. So I'm just using twine that I grabbed from Home Depot, and I don't have any rhyme or reason. So basically, I usually just do a loop de loop de loop, and see where I want it to kind of hang as my centerpiece. And I just take another piece of twine. And the flowers and greenery are going to be all over this, so we're not going to see it. Do you need your glue gun on? 
It is on. Oh. Did not know. Yeah. It is on. That was the first thing I did, Johnny. Okay. So here we have, this is where basically I'm going to go. I'm going to turn these down. Okay. And then we can start kind of building up. So I bought these roses um, for a couple reasons. Number one, they're pretty, but number two, I really liked the leaves on these. They're, so they're called dusty rose style leaves. Yeah, they're gorgeous. So we have a plant called a dusty rose, and then they're they're green, but they've got this white fur on them. Mm-hmm. Very pretty. Yeah. So, oops. Um, I just use hot glue. Um, but you, if you want to, can use, there's all sorts of things you can use. I do use my angled squeegee for that. So I'm going to put a dollop of glue and we're going to put our twine. And I actually just use my mini squeegee to hold it down because our squeegees are silicone, so they won't burn. It won't burn your finger, and you can push it down nice and hard. Flowers came from Joanne's. Yes, buy one, get one free right now. Nice. So then these, I'm going to go right here and here. So we're going to start by, I think that will be good. Well, right about there. And then I'm going to take this one and put right there. Grab my mini squeegee and press down. I cannot take credit for the mini squeegee. That was a Sean hack. Nice. One day I said, oh, I need to get those finger thingies so I don't burn myself. And then I was like, really, what I need is like a squeegee finger. And he was like, just use a mini squeegee. And I was like, Sean, you're brilliant as always. Okay, so same thing here. We're going to add this right. Maybe about there. So I just add a glue. Now I love this glue gun. My area does not have, supposedly Ryobi is coming out with like a miniature version of their glue gun. We do not have it in our area yet. Nope. Um, we found it online. It's actually kind of hard to find even online. Um, I don't, under, I guess the only advantage, Sean, would you say, is the fact that it's miniature? Like Small, yeah. I mean, the base that it sits in is almost as big as a normal gun. Mm -hmm. So I'm not really sure what the purpose of a mini glue gun. Yeah, I don't know either. Okay, so now we are going to do the flowers. Now, the flowers, I don't want to have the stems. We're going to cut them pretty low, but I do want to figure out kind of how we want to do it. Now, you'll, you've heard me say, but also Sean say, we have to work in odds. Odd numbers. Yep, and so I think I'm going to do a big pink, a big, this middle gray, well, no, yes, and then the small pink. So, just going to clip it as cl close as I can without messing up the flower. These are called snips, I think. Diagonals. Diagonals. Love them. Um, so much that I wanted my own, so Sean got them for me for Christmas mm -hmm. two years ago. It's and now, two he's always ago. like, why well, have mine? Do you want mine? I'm like, no. I don't want yours. I want mine. Okay, so I'm going to add a healthy amount of hot glue. The one thing I will say on this hot glue gun, the one, if there was a criticism, is it drips. Um, it does a lot of what I call spinning, but Sean has uh, taught me well that if I pull back on the glue gun you here... Just, you do a small twist and just pull back it. It relieves the pressure because this part of the gun is pushing into the, the heating unit and as you're pulling the trigger and it mm -hmm. keeps the pressure which makes it keeps leaking. So if you pull that back, it won't do that. Why use um, odd number? Um, it is aesthetically pleasing to the eye to see um, something like this in uh, odd number. Even numbers, it's it doesn't look right for some weird reason. Our eyes just like, wait, 
something's wrong with that and you look at it if it's an even number it's, that's why add one more boom it's perfect yeah it was something that they taught us at old navy in the display department that and roy g biv um and normally i would say i don't think that's a thing it's a thing it's a thing it's really weird um in nature they are never in even numbers really i didn't know that Jan, I've been looking for a Ryobi Brad Nealer. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry there. Now we could add some more twine if we wanted to. We could add some elements, but I like it just like it is. I do wait for the hot glue to dry just a little bit and then I will go through and fluff it. Now, I don't like putting the greenery all the way around. There are people that want the greenery here, down. Um, I like it just like that. There are people that will sometimes put stuff at the end. I like the end of the saw to be very simple and understated. That's just me. But you could see by adding a whole bunch of different flowers and stuff. But let's go ahead. First, I'll hold it up for YouTube to see. Oops. Bring it down. There you go. Perfect. All right. And here you go, Facebook. So this is a pretty saw, so I would say um, when we auction this off and sell it, I would, I'm probably thinking we would either do, I think we'd almost have to do hangers on these, right? Like little metal hangers, um, or what would on you this say? this one, what's cool about this one, one of two things, this one actually has holes that go all the way through the handle. I'm going to see if you have a... Uh, I could put a screw, a right small back. screw on the other end of that to hold it up on that end, but on this end, you would have to put some kind of a J-hook or a nail so it would fit in the tooth uh, for it to hold on a wall. Because um, you really don't want to put anything that goes over because you're just going to make makes it look weird. Um, but just as long as it does not fall and cut anybody and make sure it is, if you ever do a saw, make sure it's not something that somebody can rub up against like down a staircase or somewhere it's on a hallway because these, are, even though it's old, these are still sharp and will cut you, cut your, will cut your clothes and all that stuff. So, be very careful on where you um, put your saws on your walls or something. Yeah, we learned that the hard way. Um, I know some people to protect will get a piece of plastic tubing, cutting it right down the middle of it, and have it right down there. You can do that, but of course you're going to see it. Yeah, we really don't have Q-tips. Oh. Yeah. All right, what do you think? I what does everyone this. think? Everybody loves this. It's so fun. I forgot how fun sauce can be. Yep. So that's what I love about truck tours. It can go on any surface. And when I saw this transfer wild and free, I immediately thought wild and free, wild and free. Like, what is that? And I thought a saw, a saw would be perfect. And we have all these saws. And I don't think we've done a saw project since last year's Christmas um, and stuff. So. Yeah. And then I think we auctioned it off, too. Yeah, we did. I'm trying to remember who won that. So anyways, um, I want to thank all of you, YouTube. This is a new format for us. Um, the reason we're doing this is we understand that on YouTube, um, just to let you guys understand our thinking, we get YouTube as a place where people go after the fact to watch our videos. They create playlists. They create, mm -hmm. um, like, I'm going to rewatch this hey, later on. Video. Here, I'll let you talk to them and I can kind of fix this so they can oh, watch you too. so that's the reason why we do the YouTube um, and stuff. But we also love the fact of doing the new way of our lives. So um, we just want to thank everyone that keeps being uh, so flexible with us and understanding and knowing that we do things a little bit of a different way. Um, we will be actually live on YouTube tomorrow. So that is um, Truck Tour, Ken's Creations. Also, um... Our other channel, which is just Ken's Creations, mm -hmm. we are going to be going live to show off some uh, fun products. So you might want to check yeah. that out. Um, if you have any questions on Truck Couture, let us know. Joining our club, joining our team, mm -hmm. yep. shopping as a designer. However, please reach out to us. And I hope you guys really enjoy today's project. I love how it turned out. I think this is going to look so amazing in someone's house. And uh, I love it. Love it. And Cece, thank you for being a very good girl through the live. Look how excited she is. Look at her. What is it? Are you ready? She's like, I'm ready. Let's go. She's ready to go, Ty. She's ready to go, Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody.
All right, girls, I'm coming. I'll get you guys one second. Is it okay if they just go out in the backyard? Yep. Oh, now you just All right, gone. YouTube. Bye-bye, YouTube. Bye. What? What, love? I was telling YouTube goodbye.